Hello and welcome back to Art with Anna. Today we are talking about an artist from England named Damien Hirst. Um, if you were around in the 90s, he might have been a name that you've heard of before. Um, that's when he was the most famous, was in the 1990s. So he was born in the 60s, he's still alive today, um, still in England and still making art. Um, let's talk about what we need for our projects. Uh, we are doing two projects in this video, however, um, if you just do one of them, that's perfectly fine. We have an extra one for the people who finish early um, and just one for the people who are maybe a little bit slower at making art, and that's okay too. So we'll make two artworks today, um, one representing more life and one representing more death. Um, both were probably the most prominent themes in Damien Hirst's artwork. So let's talk about what we'll need and then we'll get started. What we'll need for this project is a piece of white construction paper, a piece of dark construction paper, various other bright colors of construction paper, a variety of bright colored paint, a marker, scissors, glue, butterfly wing stencils that you should find on the art cart, a sponge brush, and you'll need some circle stencils that should also be on the art cart. Now these stencils might be covered in paint by the time you see them, so look around for them um, and make sure you don't throw them away after you use them because a group after you might, might be needing them. Damien Hirst kind of has an obsession both with life and death, so butterflies are a good way to kind of depict that, right? We have um, kind of the resurrection of the butterfly as it comes out of its cocoon. So that's what makes butterflies such an interesting um, subject for Damien Hirst. Now, he um, claims not to be a religious man. However, a lot of his artwork does um, mimic things of re religion. Um, for example, one of his butterfly artworks that we'll look at is um, a direct replica of a rose window that is found in the Lincoln Cathedral, which I'm not exactly sure. Let's see where the Lincoln Cathedral is. You can find a rose window um, actually at Hope College's church at Demnit Chapel. Um, it's a pretty common um, Christian stained glass feature in churches. So he does do a stained glass window like that. Another um, thing that he does is just kind of a mandala effect which can maybe be referenced back to the religion of Buddhism. Many times uh, Buddhist monks while they are meditating will create mandalas um, together. So I think he is a little bit religious. He claims that art is his religion and maybe that's the case. Um, he is a little obsessed with death like we mentioned and what he's maybe the most famous for are his animals suspended in formaldehyde. Um, they're animals who have been taxidermied and they're suspended in these big blue glass cases um, and one of them that he does is the golden calf, which is also a story um, in the, that we can find in the Bible. So I think he is interested in religion, even if maybe he doesn't believe in it. But we are going to focus on the artwork of him, of his butterflies. So he calls them kaleidoscope paintings, um, and it does look like a kaleidoscope, but made all of butterfly wings. So we are going to do something similar. We don't have actual butterfly wings to work with. So I have made up some different templates of different... Um, shaped butterfly wings, and we'll use those to make our art. So our first step is we're gonna grab that dark colored piece of construction paper that you have. We're gonna do a few things. We're gonna fold it in half, hamburger way, also known as horizontally, and then vertically, or hot dog way. So you should have both folds in there. We're also gonna fold them uh, diagonally this way and this way. So it's not going to be perfect since these pieces of paper are rectangular and not square. Um, so I'm just matching corner to corner approximately to leave me with that and I'm going to do the other corner to corner. So 
remember we have kind of all these lines. We have a center point and everything around, around it. Um, our goal is to make some half butterflies on one side of the line with paint and then to fold it in half and press it down and it will make the other side of the butterfly exactly symmetrical on the other side. So let's get started on that. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna focus on is this line that goes straight up and down on our piece of paper. I'm gonna take some paint and I'm gonna squirt onto a piece of paper and use that as my palette. All right, so I've got my paint, I've got my paper. Again, I'm gonna focus on this line that goes straight up and down and I am going to take some templates and put one wing on one side of this line. And load that up with paint. We'll want it pretty wet. We want it really thick with paint because we're gonna fold this in half eventually. So all the way to the center, I'm gonna put butterfly wings on just this side of the line. One more down here. All right, so we've already pre-folded our paper, um, so it's gonna be pretty easy to fold it in half here. We're gonna fold it in half, really gonna press down. So when we open it, we have symmetrical butterflies. The closer you get your wing to the line, the closer the butterfly will be together. So I should have put these a little closer together. Um, but I'm also gonna fold it across this bottom line. So now we have kind of butterflies all the way down that are perfectly symmetrical. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna turn this sideways like this. I think I'll be able to fit one or two wings right here. I'm gonna fold it in half this way and then we'll fold it in half again this way. Put just one there, I think. All right, and I'm gonna fold it in half. And once I have a whole butterfly right there, Fold it in half again this way. Press. So I might fill this one in a little bit because it did get a little too dry. Um, so I'll really want to load my butterflies with more paint. And I'm just going to fold this across again. There we go. So now this part gets a little more tricky. Um, we do have the lines that go crisscross on here. What we can do with these um, is make them straight up and down. And we'll do one up here, and I'll do one down here. One there. I'm gonna do this one upside down, down here. All right, and we are gonna just fold this across like this. We're left with a butterfly there, and we're gonna do the same thing here. and do the opposite down here. So when we fold it over, we have a butterfly, full butterfly up here and a full one down here. All 
All right, so we're left with kind of a very symmetrical mandala type look to it. If you want to add more butterflies, you can totally add more wings up here, just one wing, whatever you'd like, you can fill in up there. Um, but since we have our butterflies right now, I am going to add some bodies to them because we only have wings. So with my marker, I'm going to make a body and some um, antennas. I'm gonna do that with all of our butterflies. Now we want this to be symmetrical. So when we get to the middle, I'm gonna turn it upside down. There we go. Butterfly there. All right, and there we have our butterfly piece of artwork. It's kind of symmetrical and um, kind of stained glassy, kind of like our artist Damien Hurst. And you can make as many as these of these as you want. If you're making this with a group and you put them all together, it'd be fun to see how you could make kind of a stained glass with many of them all stacked together. Let's talk about how Damien Hurst also did some fun-loving things. They weren't always death, although that does seem to be a theme in most of his artwork. Um, Damien Hurst is also really, really known for his dot paintings, and they are exactly that. Um, mostly, they are on just a white background, so let's grab out our white piece of construction paper right now. Some of Damien Hurst's artwork was pretty dark. The butterflies isn't super dark, although it is using butterflies who had died. Um, but whenever he made brightly colored butterfly paintings, he'd kind of counter that with a canvas covered in dead flies or something really dark and scary like that. Um, so he does a lot of juxtapositions between light and dark, although he does like to tend to stay on the dark side. One of his most f famous pieces of artwork is a human skull that's encrusted in diamonds. Um, kind of making death beautiful, that's kind of something that he's very interested in. He did spend some time in art school in a, in a morgue, um, and that, that really influenced his art. He became very interested in human anatomy and concepts of life and death, um, the thought of us of death being something scary to humans. That's all very true, and that's something he wanted to explore in his artwork. So, before death, well, he was still thinking about death, but he also, every once in a while, will play around with just something lighthearted in color. For example, these dot paintings. So that's what we're gonna recreate today, are these dot paintings. But he would do something similar, like paint the bottom of pans all different colors, so they kind of looked like colorful dots. Um, and he has talked about it them looking like pills, which would kind of tie in with his, his kind of fascination with anatomy um, and the human body and bodies of animals. Um, but he also just said it's nice to have a grid of something where something fits inside. I think it's kind of like making sense of a crazy world. We as humans like to have things kind of set in boxes. Um, so that is something that he also thinks about when making these dot artworks. So I have taken the liberty to cut out some circle stencils that we can use today. Now his dot paintings could look very different. Some of the dot paintings were huge with tiny, tiny, tiny little dots on them. Others were smaller with giant dots on them. So you get to choose. Um, I made some stencils with different sizes of dots in them. But we're gonna take our white sheet of paper and our goal is to cover our paper using a dot stencil. Um, or the reason I have asked you to have different colors of construction paper is because we can also cut out circles from the different colors of paper and glue those down. So I'll do a combination of both. For this, you can pick just one, but I wanna show you how to do both. So we'll get started making a dot painting. Okay, so first thing is first, we have our piece of white paper and we have our stencil. I've laid it out so it matches up with the paper. So we know we're just gonna do three dots. 
Um, he liked to use different colors and in random order. People often ask if his um, colors had any meaning, and he says subconsciously they probably do, but he didn't have any, anything he was necessarily trying to say or convey with his dot paintings. The colors don't have any super true meaning to them. So I'm going to take some paint. I'm choosing yellow. You can choose whatever your color you want. And I am going to stencil in the circle. If you are not at Benjamin's Hope, it is easy to make a stencil. I am just used some cardstock and cut some circles out of it. So quite easy. If you have the motor skills to paint a circle, um, I'll show you a really easy way. So there is my circle, my yellow circle. If you have the motor skills to um, paint your own circle without a stencil, a really easy way to do that is to load up your brush, and it doesn't have to be a um, sponge brush, but if you have that, that works too. Set it down, try to keep this edge in the same spot and spin around that spot. And that makes a pretty good, pretty good circle. So just taking it and spinning it really around the same, same center. Pretty good circle. So there's another circle, but if you are just using the stencil, that's great. So we have one there, one there, and we're gonna do one more down here. We have three dots on our paper. Now I told you we would also talk about how to cut them out. So right here I just have two colors of paper. Um, you can use three, four, as many colors as you'd like. And I've just folded it in fourths. I really only need three circles to match up with this. And I want them to be about the same size. So in this corner I'm gonna cut out half circle that I opened up, and it's kind of a circle-y shape. I'm going to do one like that, like that, another green one like that. And that's why we need some glue. Glue these babies down. Last but not least, I'm going to put this stencil back on. I do have this pink one though, so maybe I'll stick the pink one in down here or in here, wherever I want it. Got a blue one there, the purple one here. down this pink one. We are left with a dot painting, just like Damien Hurst. So while you're working on that, um, I would like to just give you a little background on Damien Hurst. So he was born in, um, in England and he, um, lived with a single mother for a while, then lived with a stepdad who then also left. And he was kind of a troubled teen who did not do well in school and was very rebellious. His mother did not like this. Um, she would put his vinyl records of rock and roll in the oven and heat them up and turn them into bowls. And he, she would burn his pants that she didn't like that were um, a little more punk rock looking clothes. Um, so um, she was not about his rebellion, but she did always encourage him to draw. It was one of the only subjects in school that he was good in. Um, and he had to apply to art schools many times because he didn't do well in high school. Um, he finally got into one and made some art. He applied to a different one, made more art, um, but both of these schools he had to apply many times to. So. Um, now he is one of the most wealthy artists 
in the world. He is um, worth about $300 million. Um, he is one of the first artists to sell a whole body of work in an auction. This auction alone um, made him $11 million. So he was kind of the first to change up how art was sold. He was also famous in the 90s, which was a time when there was a, a lot of famous um, young artists coming from England. So he's part of that movement. And um, he's just generally a, a cool guy that um, just has an interesting perspective and makes you look at things differently. One of my favorite installations of his is a pharmacy. He just made the inside of a gallery look like a pharmacy with a bunch of um, bottles on the wall. And he does that because he does like to think about life, life of humans and death and medicine helps you stay alive. So it's kind of on that theme. But he also liked that when people came up an elevator to get to the gallery, they'd walk out and think they were in a pharmacy and turn around and go back down and say, hey, where's the art? Um, he liked to confuse people a little bit, play with them a little bit. So some of his art is a little bit cheeky to play on the human condition or he's trying to trick people a little bit. Um, so I think that is something that makes him very unique as well. So I hope you guys enjoy making this project because it's, a, it's fun. Um, it's a little more simple than some of our last ones, but um, it's kind of fun to look at the very light and bright circles versus our kind of dark, um, stained glassy looking, looking artwork. It's fun to see an artist that has two sides of him, too, right? He's not just one dimensional artist. It's a lot of 2D work and a lot of 3D work, too. Um, so. Some, someone really cool to focus on when we're working on art today. All right, well, I think we should be all finished up with our artwork. You should have a butterfly stained glass window. Um, if you made it to the second project, then you should also have a dot painting, which I like. This one's so fun. It's just very happy. Um, and I hope you learned a little bit about Damien Hurst. He's a contemporary artist, um, still around today, so we'll have to look out for more artwork that comes from him, listen out for his name. Um, but thank you for joining me today. And I hope you learned a little bit. I hope you had a lot of fun. i um, excited to see what you guys make. So I will link below the template I used to cut out the butterfly wings. Um, so if you're not from Benjamin's Hope, you can cut out your own. And if you're doing circles, I really just cut out circles, not a cardstock. So, um, but if you are not from Ben's Hope, please send me your artwork. I love seeing pictures of it. Um, and see what you guys make. So thank you for tuning in and I will see you guys next week. Bye.